This video is about SIRs and the future of SIRs and Scarlet and Violet moving forward into the future. And we're going to just talk about kind of where the cards are at and where I think we're going. A lot of uh, the the talk these days is about where we're at and like near future. We're going to be talking maybe a little bit more long term. And it can be hard to tell because we're still, you know, kind of in the middle of the Scarlet and Violet era. But let's just dive straight into this. So uh, these are SIRs only if you're not familiar with the term you guys can see right here special illustration rare it's one of the rarest types of cards uh, they changed to the star tier there is like three star rarities but these are two star these are pretty much the chase cards that people are going to want and if i, I i'm going to talk about if i was a betting man what cards that i would pick out of all of these sirs we're gonna we're gonna take a deep dive through all of them what cards i would be betting on to probably have the most percentage gain make the most money um, moving forward. We're talking a little bit more long-term here. We're talking uh, within a few years, like maybe two to five year-ish range, depending. Not like super long-term, but, you know, give it some years. Because uh, we're always looking back to Sword and Shield now, which is becoming old. And those card prices are way up there, a lot of those uh, chase cards. So I just want to see, like, where this could be going in the future. Now, if I had to pick one of these, especially on this first page, one that I thought could have the most potential for growth out of all of these, it would be this card. And I'm going to tell you guys why, and I don't think it needs that much explaining. But, all I mean, pretty much, for me, uh, for older, the older collector, the older investor, it has the nostalgia, but you take the nostalgia away... Um, Look at just look at this card. I, I have this card. I pulled this card. This card is undervalued for the long term. And I stand by that. This card is amazing. This card is way too good. If you just start to look at the artwork and everything about it, it is too good of a card. Now, if you want to look at the chart, we'll pull up. The, we got the chart here. We'll take a look at it. Uh, this is the three month. You know, it, it has came up a little bit. It, it touched 40, got rejected off of 40 which is unfortunate. I think this is definitely the most underrated 151 card. Um, on the one-year chart, you know, obviously it came out the gate uh, at 50, and it tanked all the way down to, it was like 31, and now we're up to just below 40. So I think long-term that this card is going to be one that you're going to want to be picking up for sure. And obviously there's most likely going to be a 151 English reprint coming, and that's going to affect things for a while. But I'm talking way down the road. This is an amazing card, and I think... Um, let's put some numbers on it and we can revisit this in a few years if you guys want. That'll be fun. Uh, I don't always, I don't like to do this a lot, but, um, I think this could easily double in price. I think we could be easily looking at a $70 card. Um, if it, well, that wouldn't be fully doubling cause I like 38, but so let's say $75, $76. Okay. That's, you know, what, I'm going to say 80. $80 card. Easy. Hands down easy. Uh, we're going to go back to the list, but next up, probably, and a lot of you guys might give me some crap for this, but if I, the second card that I would pick, if I had to bet, is actually this card. This Charizard from Obsidian Flames. One, it's Charizard. Two, I think Obsidian Flames is hated on a lot for no reason, and I think this card is still too cheap. Look at this, we're at just above $40, some sales. We got a near mint at 38 on TCG player. The one year chart obviously came out the gate hot, like way too hot, 225, right? And it's just been on a slow and steady decline, like really consistent decline, which is interesting. And I just think that this card is too good long-term to be at, at the $40 range. Uh, I, if you're talking years down the road, guys, I'm just saying I, I don't see how this how this also as a as a Charizard, which I really like this artwork personally. You guys can if you don't like it, that's fine. You know, fast forward a little bit, go to the next card. Um, but I do think that this card, just Charizard, will carry this card eventually over time. And I know it comes from a Charizard set. There might be some Charizard fatigue, but give it a few years, man. This card's I'm gonna say. Uh, 70 to 80 range like easy like i don't i don't see when we get to the point this is what you guys also have to remember when we start to get to the point where these boxes are out of stock on the pokemon center kind of like what just happened with sword and shield with some of those like later sword and shield sets selling out like 
the box prices go up, the singles follow, right? I'm trying to be a little conservative with some of my numbers, but you know, I don't. If you're getting this at 40 bucks and it goes to 80, you're going to be doubling your money. So, and then there's also grading potential with all all of these cards, obviously, because they're chase cards. Uh, I've talked about the Roaring Moon before. This is another card that I still think is undervalued. It came out the gate um, at 75, went up to 114. You know, it's down all the way to 50, uh, just above 55 dollars for 56. But we do have we have a sale at 60, and then some below. But average is at 72. I think th just I I have this card personally in a 10. And I do think that with, I like all the background Pokemon. I like the scream tails screaming. I think that same thing with this card. I, I don't see it being any lower than, than that, like at least that $80 range for years to come. That's just my opinion. So I, I just think it's too good. And I know I, I keep saying that and that's like a generic thing, but I'm just talking like artwork wise. And I know that some of these sets are there. The pull rates are a little bit easier and we'll get into some of the other ones, but uh, I think there's a lot of room on these good cards. Next up is the Gardevoir. And this card is just coming off of its one year high. I've talked about this before in, in some other videos, but the, and I like Scarlet and Violet base. I know a lot of people don't, but I think that this card is just too adorable and the story it tells with the the Ralts and the Curlia and the Gardevoir growing up with like the family. Um, and I know that pull rates were easier in Scarlet and Violet base, but I think the same thing, like kind of along the same mindset where maybe, maybe this won't be in the $80 range, but 40, 50 bucks. So if you're getting it at 28 and goes up to 40, 50, that's pretty good percentage gains. I don't think we need to talk too much about it. If you see this card in person, you'll appreciate it a lot more. It sparkles a lot more. Like, this doesn't do it justice at all. Now, this, the Giovanni's Charisma, um, I think that this card has the potential to pop off mainly from the Team Rocket. Here comes Team Rocket set when that comes out. We don't still know what exactly that's going to be, but I could picture that set carrying this card up. I mean, it's... It's at like 10 bucks right now, so I could easily see, see this being in the 20s, which would be doubling easily. Uh, 20 to $30 card in the future, I definitely could see that. Um, you know, on the on the one year here, it, it hasn't really moved a whole lot, right? It's been kind of in the same channel, so uh, I think I think that percentage-wise, uh, Giovanni's Charisma has, has some room to run because of that rocket set, because uh, this is too iconic. You know, he's got the Master Ball in the background with the Persian. I just think it's a, it's a little too iconic with that set coming up. So that would be the reasoning for this card. And we're going to touch on these. And I'm going to go. we're going to go back to the page and look at all of them again. And we'll pull up some key ones. But uh, the Legendaries, I still think, are too cheap from Scarlet and Violet. Just, you know, this this card has had a little bit of a run-up. And it's at, like, 13 bucks. But come on, there's no way, like, $30 card in the future, way down the road for I, I think so same same with the maridon um i just i really like this artwork i like the dash bun here it's th these are the legendaries and the other thing that you guys have to remember i've talked about it in other videos but i'm gonna bring it up again is that kids now younger kids are growing up on scarlet and violet like that's gonna be their red and blue their gen one so they're gonna have nostalgia for these cards that w us older people don't have and that's fine. Well, let's like make we're gonna make some money off of that. I am. So, uh, Maridon and Karidon, um, We won't touch on that too much. Uh, we're gonna go back to another one from 151 that I think long term has a chance to to really make some good gains. The Alakazam. I really like this card. I love the Pokemon. I love that he's levitating the spoons, and I like the busyness of this card. Actually, um, I did pull this card, so. Uh, Maybe, I, I don't know if I'm a little biased just because I pulled it, but uh, I, if I'm going to throw some prices out there, you know, like I, this could be a, yeah, I mean, we're at 30, so it definitely could hit the 40s, but I'm thinking like 50, 55, 60 range for sure. Like worst case scenario, that's kind of what I'm thinking long term, but definitely has some room. I mean, out of the gate came out at 45, 
So obviously, and, it, and its low point was down at 26. So um, it's had had a little bit of a run up since 26, but that was quite the crash from 45 to to 26. So um, yeah, I think the Alakazam is another one. But let's go back to our main page here. And I just want to kind of take a look at everything here. We'll just do like a little over analysis on all of these. So obviously, um, let me just close out on some of these tabs here real quick. Okay. Um, so the, the Greninja obviously is the current leader, which is crazy. Some people saying, uh, you know, this is that this is the uh, Umbreon, the Moonbreon of the era. I, I don't. I well, I do actually really like the artwork and the style. I don't think that that's it. I I don't think that card has come quite yet. Um, although I will admit that it is entirely possible, but I just don't think that this card is going to carry that out. But I I'm amazed by what it's been doing. But if you look at here, we only have four cards that are over a hundred dollars. Uh, the Charizard from 151 has been taken off a little bit, and the Paldean Charizard is another great looking card. You know, at 116, but. Um, we'll pull up the Greninja chart just to take a look real quick because I, I, I've just touched on this, but I just want to touch on it again. Um, you know, it has retraced a tiny bit, 240 down to 235. I thought this might was going to touch 250. Uh, the listed median price is at 270, so it could it could have another little run up here. I'm not sure. Um, maybe sales have slowed down and people are starting to lower their prices. I'm not really sure, but, you know, th that's, that's the Greninja there. Um, so yeah, only four cards over a hundred. Whereas if you look at Sword and Shield, there's a lot um, of those top cards, you know, that are over that price. Then if you get into the second row, it starts to get a lot weaker, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it starts to weaken here. I, I'm not a fan of the trainers or the waifu cards personally. I don't think this card is going to hold. I don't think so. Um, so I, you know, I'd be staying away from this. The Bubble Mew, I do like. I do think it's a great card. Um, it's it's really adorable. I like the art style. It's kind of like a little more more basic with the Pokemon in the background. Um, and then you know the Raging Bolt is okay. Once again, I'm not super fan of the. I like the art, but I just don't like the the Pokemon per se. The Perrin, I like that it pairs with the Growlithe, but you know for me at 75, not touching it. Iono, not touching it personally. If you guys want to collect them, go ahead. Um, you know I don't judge you guys for it. Um, then I think down here is where we start to have more potential for some other cards to move up. So, uh, and I think we have potential for these, some of these cards to drop out of these top spots. And so like we already touched on the roaring moon and we'll kind of, kind of in that same category. I, I think that this Gardevoir, we talked about the other Gardevoir from Scarlet and Violet. I think that this card is really great looking and the iron crowns too less like once again less so the pokemon for me but i do like the art um i could picture these cards moving up i'm i'm not so sure about the the ursa luna the blood moon but due to its rarity i mean we could see this this moving up but then when we get down here uh into this next row just you never know with some of these cards what because i mean i i mean i picked zapdos down here as my main my main investment um out of all of these but the walking wake the blast so the blastoise and the venusaur i could also see these really taking off long term but that is going to depend on how heavily if they print the english 151 like they printed the japanese there will just be too many copies so that is possible but i don't see them printing it just like the Japanese to that extreme uh, but it is possible so I, that's why I probably wouldn't bet on these ones as much but you know I, that being said I did bet on the Zapdos so um, I guess I kind of am betting on 151 but you know right here I think these are all solid cards that are in that $40 range that they could easily move up all of these and I could see all of these around 60 at least I, I, that seems totally doable now you get down here these cards, I, if I had to pick one from here, I'm probably, honestly, I might go with Morty's Conviction just because of the Gengar. I think the Gengar has a lot of pull, a lot of power, and yeah, 39 bucks. I mean, we'll pull up the chart real quick. I think, yeah, so three months, it came out, it was, had that big old run-up, came out 
you know, at 40, ran up to almost 100, and it's back down to about where it came out at, which is interesting. But I could see this, I could see this card being a little bit more popular and carrying a little bit more weight to it. Then at the bottom here, this bottom row, um, obviously the Zapdos is my choice, but I could see the Altaria carrying a little bit more of a premium demand, maybe hitting that $50, $60 mark. Same with all, like all of these cards could move up a few tiers. Um, the Iron Valiant though, besides the Zapdos out of this row, I think that there is some potential here because of the like the future Titar in the back and being a uh, like a Gardevoir variant. Once again, very popular Pokemon. I do like to bet on Gardevoir, and you got like Delibirds, and there's like just stuff going on, right? Uh, one year chart, you know, it, it was at seventy-one dollars, and I do think that it could get back to that. Um, give it a few years. I, I think that that is um, one hundred percent possible. So. Uh, Iron Valiant at $33 is a steal as well. Let's jump on to page two. We're going to start moving a little bit faster here because some of these cards are just going to be a little bit uh, lower lower value. We're just going to kind of kind of blaze through. And this is where it kind of starts to weaken for me. But the ones I want to touch on the most, uh, obviously we touched on these, but the uh, the Chiyu, the Chin Pao, these, these are legendaries, new legendaries. So it's kind of the same mindset as... I could picture these moving up into the into the forty dollar range uh, over time. You know, I don't know if that's super near future, but um, yeah. So that's what I see for that. I've talked about this Garchomp before too. I think this Garchomp could could take off and this could double in price. We could see this in the forties. Uh, then also the Skeledurge and the other starters from Paldea, the final evolutions. I think we could see those having a big run up over time. I think the Masquerade is too cheap at 13 bucks. Final evolution of a popular Pokemon from the show. We've talked about that before. If you guys haven't seen the show, check it out. Um, but yeah, the Coridon as well, right? Um, now we touched on Giovanni. You got another really low uh, legendary here at like eight bucks. Um, yeah, definitely room to move there. Now this card right here, the the Grusha, um, this is a little bit of a sleeper, potentially. I mean, just because I like the the Starlies here, but you have a you have an evolution here. There's that Glaceon, I believe. So uh, you never know what could happen with something like this. I wouldn't personally bet my money on it, but uh, I could definitely see it. It's it could definitely move up, right? Um, the Pidgeot also from Obsidian Flames I could definitely see this being in the twenty twenty five range uh, over time. Got another legendary here, the Ting Lu. Same same story. Quackaval at seven bucks is too cheap, I think, um, for a final evolution starter. So then we're pretty much at the bottom of the barrel here. Now, Rever Room. Now, Spide Ops does tell a story. Probably not. So I mean, that's pretty much gonna do it. Like I'm not really expecting much from these. So that's kind of it, just for the SIRs. But we have to remember that we still have so many more SIRs to come out. So I think that's what's hurting Scarlet and Violet. But those are my picks for like what's available now, what you can buy now, and what I would be buying, what I am buying. So uh, hopefully that helped you guys. Um, if you made it this far in the video, this one went long again. I do apologize. Uh, you obviously enjoyed the video if you're this far in, though. Uh, so if you could go down below, hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up while you're there. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, what cards you have out of these, what, what you're looking to get, if you agree, disagree, anything. Um, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.